Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzuda7 here again, and welcome to another video here on the Desperate Measures Quest Day release. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over the additional rewards you can unlock after completing the quest. Uh, if you missed it and you are interested, I did upload a quest guide for it, which I will link in the description. Uh, if you want to check that out, I do a full walkthrough of the whole quest. But there are a couple of things that you can get after the quest if you go and get them. So first of all, first of all is this remote totem charging point. And if you complete the quest, you will get a piece of this totem. There are three pieces, as there are with all of the totems on Anachronia. And the other two you have to get from, number one, doing mining on Anachronia. So you can do mining at any of these spots around the island. I was doing it at this spot right here, which has adamant and luminite. Uh, I do not know if it's per swing or per ore you get, but I was just doing this lowest level spot for the possibility of it being per ore that you get. And it took me 658 ore to get the totem piece from there. Um, that was pretty much average from what I've seen people talking about it. Some people have gone more, some people have gotten it like right away. So that is uh, where you can get that from. That is one of the pieces. And then the other piece you get from selling animals on the ranch out of time. And anybody who wants to get this piece can just go there, buy either frogs or salamanders from the shop using beans, depending on who you have there as your seller, and then sell them immediately. Just check them and then sell them, and you should get it pretty quick. I only had to sell five salamanders to get it. Um, as far as I know, it's not very rare as long as you are selling them. Just go there, buy small animals from the shop, and you can uh, sell them immediately after checking them and you'll get another totem piece. So once you have all three, you can combine them and then bring that totem fully constructed to Giles here. Um, and this is where you're gonna need uh, some pretty high stuff from the base camp. So you will need 150K of stone, wood, and vines, as well as a tier three town hall and a tier three storehouse to build the totem charging point. So that is a bit of a, High, high amount of things that you need to have done with the base camp originally. I mean, it has been out for a while, so most likely most people will have that completed, but you might not have had the resources stocked up. Uh, however, yeah, you will need 150K of those three resources alongside tier three storehouse and tier three on the town hall. And then you can build it here and then it will pretty much just put the totem on its own when you build it at that spot right by the lodestone, as you saw, when I started the video, the remote totem charging point will be here. And from here, you can simply click it to charge your totems and you'll do the normal totem charging ritual that, you know, has the bar above your head that fills up. And once it's done, all of your totems all across the island will be charged. And you can check if they are charged by right click checking it. And you can see I've already done it. So all my totems are active and it even tells you where the various ones you have are. So it is a very, very nice thing to have. It's gonna make it way less annoying to recharge your totems um, when you're, you know, every week you had to do it before. And previously, I mean, I would never even bother going all the way up here to charge my totem of the abyss. It just wasn't worth the time for me. And even uh, for the other ones, like I wouldn't go here to charge my treasure trail totem unless I was specifically going to be doing some. And then same with the intimidation. I only went there if I was going to be doing God Wars dungeon. So I might swap out the treasure trails one and the God Wars dungeon one for some of the more generally useful ones, like maybe the summoning and the auras, because it'll be worth it to use those since I can just simply activate them every week. And then if I ever want to go to God Wars or do some treasure trails, I can just run over to the one on the coast here and activate it, you know, remove the one that's there and, and put the one I want and activate it without having to worry about, you know, wasting too much time. So it is a very, very nice thing to have. And I would highly recommend you get it if you have the base camp resources and everything available. Getting the mining piece and the farm piece are not too hard at all. And then the quest piece obviously is quite easy as well. Uh, so that's one thing. And then there's one other thing that you can get after finishing the quest. You do receive as a reward the Cosmic Focus, and you can upgrade this to the Cosmic Accumulator. 
I mistakenly thought that this was actually a relic, but it is just something you can carry with you while doing archaeology. The cosmic focus makes it so that your time sprite focus will not drop below 10% when you are excavating, and the cosmic accumulator ups that to 20% and also has a 1% chance to provide extra sprite focus for 60 seconds. So it is quite a bit better. I mean, it's twice as good, plus it has an additional um, benefit to it. But in order to get this, you will actually need to have 90 archaeology as opposed to the 50 that's required to do the quest to get the cosmic focus in the first place. You will then need to return to this northeastern ruins location that was uh, featured during the quest and enter the southern door, which you needed to use the dragonkin device on to enter previously, and where you did the two memories with uh, Hannibus, or not the two memories, but you did the memory with the two dragonkins in there. And once you're inside, there will be two different excavation points, one on the east side and one on the west side of the room. And one of those requires 70 archaeology and the other requires 90 archaeology. From those, you can only get one artifact from either of them. And those artifacts both only require Orthon glass to restore the level 70 archaeology artifact requires 66 Orthon glass and the level 90 archaeology artifact requires 79 Orthon glass. So if you restore both of those, you will have the two artifacts that you need in order to hand in to Giles here at the base camp for a new archaeology collection that he offers. And if you'll see here, he just has the Desperate for Artifacts collection, which has the Ceremonial Dragonkin device and the Ceremonial Dragonkin tablet, which are the two artifacts you'll get from there. And you get the Cosmic Pyramid as a reward. You also get some chronotes. However, as you can see, this is not actually a repeatable collection. Uh, so that's interesting. They usually, I'm surprised they didn't make it repeatable, to be honest with you, but... Yeah, that is um, just one time thing and you'll get the cosmic pyramid and you can then combine the cosmic pyramid with your cosmic focus and you'll have the cosmic accumulator here. I've seen quite a few people asking for this to be add addable to the tool belt, maybe by unlocking it via chronotes or something, which I think would be a good thing to have. Uh, I mean, it's not a huge deal, especially since you use porters for the most part when you're doing archaeology. Having an item in your inventory wouldn't really limit you all that much, but that's just my opinion on it. It would be a nice thing to have, though. However, at the same time, I kind of think the tool belt is a little bit OP at this point, especially considering all the stuff you can add to it through Slayer. But, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. We'll have to wait and see. It would make kind of a bit of sense in line with all the other stuff we can put on the tool belt for archaeology. So maybe they will end up doing it eventually. But those are the two additional rewards you can unlock at or upgrade after desperate measures. I definitely recommend getting the totem. Going to make using the totems much more convenient and less annoying having to recharge them every single week. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to using that for the most part. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Again, if you want a guide to the quest, check the link in the description. And uh, let me know your thoughts on these rewards down in the comments. I do wish there was some sort of repeatable content after the quest. It's kind of disappointing that we get have to wait four whole months and all we get is a one hour long quest. Despite the quest being quite good for what it is, I just wish that there was something additional. And I was also a little bit disappointed about the fact that you never went down into the dungeon that's uh, over here by Lani Akia. You might know about that dungeon if you've done Slayer there. There's a big grate in the floor that's sort of been dented in and looks like it's someone's either broken in there or something's come out of it. And um, it, I mean, I thought for sure it would be featured in the quest given the fact that, you know, I thought that was probably where Carepax Lab was right here, these bent bars, but that is not the case. We never actually even came over here at all. So I'm interested to see if they ever do incorporate this into any future update, but anyways, I'll stop rambling on now. I might make a, uh, another video at some point later just to discuss my overall thoughts on the update and the quest as a whole, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.